welcome to episode eight of the Yarn Duchess podcast. My name is Amy and this is a podcast of mostly about knitting, a little bit of spinning, some crochet, um, a little bit of yarn dyeing, and uh, next year hopefully some weaving. It has been two months since my last podcast. It is about three days before Thanksgiving here in the States and if you've been following me on uh, Instagram, you'll know that I am alive and knitting. Um, had a little bit of a, a change in my plans um, earlier this fall. Um, I really did plan on having a, a vodcast out a week or so after my last one, but I had a, a trip, unexpected trip that was thrown in there that kind of changed uh, everything up. Um, so I have a lot to share with you this time. I have a lot of spinning and um, uh, my Christmas knitting. Get, got a lot done on my Christmas knitting. And so I thought I would share, uh, start the, the podcast with uh, the couple of finished objects that I have. And then I would go into uh, spinning. And then uh, at the end of the uh, podcast, I would share my works in progress and talk a little bit about the upcoming giveaway that I am planning for you. So here we go. So my first uh, finished object is my Harmonize shawl. The last time I shared it with you I had just finished it but I hadn't uh, woven in the ends or blocked it and uh, it came out very nicely so I'm really pleased with that. And the other um, finished object that I have is uh, a pair of socks. Um, these are knitted for a friend of mine. This was my knitworthy friend that I mentioned in my last uh, podcast or vodcast, sorry. And uh, she uh, chose uh, my Magpie um, colorway, and I used the Regia uh, sock yarn that I had picked up during uh, the yarn crawl for the heels and the toes and the cuffs. Um, just to give it a little bit of um, durability. This is a nice, I think it's a four ply sock yarn. So anyway, this is my usual, uh, my sock, vanilla sock uh, with the uh, toe up, um, three by one rib and the German short row heel. And then I did the uh, sewn bind off on the, on the uh, cuff. And I really like this sewn bind off. It is a nice stretchy, um, bind off and so it doesn't uh, cut off the circulation in the leg. And let me see here. The um, other thing I wanted to talk about uh, was my spinning. We had um, Spinzilla happen during the first week of October and if you are not familiar with Spinzilla, it's an international spinning competition. It's a friendly competition uh, comprised of spinning teams usually headed by um, a yarn shop or a um, yarn manufacturer and you spin for eight days to see how much yardage that you can get um, for the entire team and and uh, it's pretty grueling you have to set aside some time for that if you really are competitive like I am and um, I think I spun a little over two miles this year and I thought I'd share some of my, my spins with you. So the first one that I'm going to share is a um, two-ply. And the uh, it's a two-ply between a green and yellow merino silk uh, ombre that was dyed by Violet, Violet Lynx Dye Works. And the color uh, way was uh, Dandelion Glade. And then I applied that with a Paulworth, Paulworth silk by Enchanted Forest. So I never spun Paulworth before, so I was really uh, curious to see how it spun. And both the, uh, the Merino silk and the Paulworth silk came out beautifully. Really a nice drapey uh, yarn is what I got from that. And uh, there it is up close. And that's, I think it's a, I think it's a, a heavy, it came out to be a heavy fingering weight. And I got, um, I didn't put down the yardage, but I got two uh, 
two skeins of yarn. I think this one here is, oh, here it is. This one is 256 yards. And then this one is, this one is 258 yards. So I got a pretty even, I was able to divide it up pretty evenly. So really happy with, with this spin. I don't usually spin bright greens and yellows, but that one, that one, uh, I really like that. And then another one that I did, which I really liked and was kind of unexpected, was um, I applied a it's a June Price in a coffee shade, 100% merino, and I applied that another two ply with uh, the colorway Riverbed. Um, it's also a Paul Worth silk um, by created by LCB. So I had one that was um, a one ply that was a like a shades of, of coffee latte kind of a, going into a cream. It was an ombre braid, and then a mixture of the um, um, the riverbed was just a, a mixture of, of earth tones. And this too um, came out very drapey and uh, pretty balanced yarn and I'm, once again I got two skeins this is uh, 255 yards and then this other one is um, 325 yards I didn't do as good a job separating uh, evenly on the once I had the the uh, bobbin full what I do is I um, my my Ashford Kiwi 2 uh, the bobbins hold a, at least six ounces of fiber and uh, I think I and, and up to eight I can actually squeeze on eight and so I um, uh, try to visually divide the bobbin in half when I'm, when I'm doing this and this one I was a little bit off so then the last one that I spun for Spinzilla was uh, the uh, merino braid that I picked up from the Estes Park wool market by the apothecary and I decided to go ahead and um, three ply this one mostly because I was running out of time and I didn't have time to um, um, spin up another bobbin of something to ply this with and but I'm pretty kind of I'm pretty happy with the three ply so it's a Navajo three ply and it's a uh, more of a DK to worsted weight and also again still pretty well balanced so i'm pretty happy with with this one too so those are my um my contributions to the spinzilla i think we end up coming in 22nd and it's at 22nd place and i i'm thinking that there were probably about 50 or 60 teams i i don't recall exactly the funny thing is about spinzilla is that you can spin uh more yarn more yardage every year but there's more teams that join on every year. And uh, sometimes the team, there's 25 slots per team. And sometimes the teams don't fill up. I remember the first year I was with uh, Blazing Star Ranch and they had several slots still available. So we had a smaller team competing against full teams for yardage. And But with the increased competition, even though we're spending more yardage, um, our, place, um, our placement uh, seems to be getting lower instead of going up. But it's, it's a lot of fun, and if you want to get some of your uh, your stash um, down, if you want to just, yeah stash down a little bit, then you, you know it's a good uh, it's a good thing to to get you going. And I really thought that after having spun so intensely for eight days, that I would not want to spin for a while. And I didn't spin for maybe about a week or so, and then suddenly I was like, I really I really want to spin. So I. Even though I have tons of Christmas knitting to do and I haven't quite finished it all, I still carved out time to do some spinning. And so most recently, um, this braid was calling to me. I, I don't have, I took pictures. If you saw me on, on Instagram, if you follow me on Instagram, you will have seen the braid. I usually try to post my braid and um, a picture of the, uh, the label. And uh, more for me to keep track of, of what I've spun. I'm just trying to do a better job of, of uh, documenting my spins and, and what I'm spinning out of and when I, sp I spin it so that uh, 
just so I know in the future when I go back to my stash and like, well, what was that yarn and how much yards are, are in there and who did I get it from? Then this, this helps me know. So if you've been following me on Instagram, then you've already seen the braid. Um, but if you don't, um, I will try to post a picture um, at somewhere in this uh, podcast. But this is uh, um, Be Myself, B-E-E-M-I-C-E-E-L-F. And this is a uh, superwash merino, four ounces. And I, I really love the colors in this one. And then another one that I just finished the other day. This was uh, by um, created by LCB, and it's called Meadows and Mist. And um, I love the the grays, and then the rusts and the greens in this one. So these are just single ply right now. I'm thinking about. Um, Oh, I'm sorry, and this is an, uh, an organic Paulworth. So this is not a Paulworth silk blend like I had spun before, so I actually really enjoyed the Paulworth. It is a really nice uh, fiber. So I'm thinking about plying uh, one or both of those uh, with uh, some alpaca. I have, if, if you've watched my previous uh, episodes, you'll know that um, I used to own alpaca, and I have... Uh, at least a dozen bags of blankets out in my garage that I need to process and um, clean and, and sort and, and uh, spin and uh, maybe do some plying with, with this uh, merino and this Polworth. So the other thing that I wanted to share before I get to uh, uh, talking about other things is... Um, one of the things that happened that threw my schedule off was that we uh, ended up going down to um, Durango for uh, an event. And since I was down that way, I suggested to my husband that maybe we should swing by the Taos Wool Festival, which was going on that same weekend. And he agreed. And so I also took the opportunity then to um, submit some of my hand spun for... Um, uh, judging. I just, um, I've been spinning for five years and really didn't know, you know, where I stood, my spinning stood in the, in the spinning world. So I just wanted to get some feedback. And, um, I mean, I know I'm happy with, with my yarn. I haven't knit with it yet. That's a whole nother subject, but I wanted to, uh, just kind of get some feedback on how I was doing and, and, you know, see where I could improve and, and things like that and so I submitted this uh, this Targi that I showed last time that I had spun up and this is from Mountain Colors and it is a uh, fingering weight and I basically just shipped it off to the um, uh, festival and then had to have them ship it back because I literally was only there for about an hour on the last day of the festival and they wanted me to drop it off first thing Saturday morning and pick it up Saturday evening and there's no way I could be there on Saturday so so anyway so I got this uh, back in the mail a few weeks ago and boy was I surprised that I actually got first place so uh, yeah I just I was just flabbergasted I just did not expect that at all but I think I got 92 out of 100 points, which I guess is really good. And um, I got some really good feedback um, from the judges. So um, yeah, so that's my that's my um, big surprise and joy for for the year. This was a really nice thing to um, to get. I said totally, totally unexpected. So. Anyway, I think maybe that's why I just decided that I want to do some more spinning. You have nothing like um, getting some good feedback to make you feel like you want to do some more. So um, let me think. Where am I on my notes here? So I talked about spinning and uh, knitting and spinzilla. And uh, oh, I want to talk a little bit about um, uh, my name change, the, the word vodcast. It had come to my attention that um, a podcast, just just a podcast, is uh, automatically um, a an audio podcast. It's kind of uh, assumed that it's just an audio, and a 
video podcast has the word video in front of it. So there's a video podcast and an audio podcast, but the default for a podcast is audio. And so the proper word for a video podcast is a vodcast. And the reason that I found this out was because someone had mentioned um, a podcast that, that they enjoyed. And so I went on YouTube looking for this podcast and couldn't find it anywhere. And then realized that it wasn't a video podcast on YouTube. It was an audio podcast on their blog. So I thought, well, now that I know this, I can't just keep calling my podcast a podcast when it's actually a vodcast. And it's just mostly just to um, ensure that there's no confusion um, as to what this is. So this is a spinning and knitting and crocheting vodcast. And thank you so much um, if you're a returning viewer for waiting for two months to uh, come back and see me. And um, if you're a new viewer, thank you for stopping by and giving me a try. And hopefully uh, you will enjoy uh, watching. So the next thing on my um, agenda here before going into works in progress is I'm going to share um, my trip to Salida, uh, which is in central, south central Colorado. And the, the festival is about two and a half hours from my home. It is one of my favorite festivals to attend. It's an outdoor festival. It's in, uh, in a park called Riverside Park. And there's actually a river that runs along the one side of the festival. And the first time I went was a few years back, and I think it was one of the first years of the festival, and it was fairly small, but still really nice. And then um, this, the, the, I've been going there, I think the third time was this year, and it was doubled in size, and I, I spent a lot of money there, but I've been saving for it because um, uh, Estes Park Wool Market... Um, um, the Salida Festival and the uh, Yarn Along the Rockies, Yarn Crawl, are my three favorite events for the year and I always look forward to those and I save up my money so that I can um, thoroughly enjoy those events. Oh, and I almost forgot, one of the, um, one of the, my favorite dyers um, lives here in Colorado Springs. Um, it's a uh, Peggy Doney of the 100th hundredth, hundredth Sheep, and I first discovered Peggy uh, at the Salida Fiber Festival a few years back, and I follow her on Instagram, and when she posted um, some of the work that she was doing in preparation for the festival, um, I quickly responded saying, please save me four of those braids because they were gorgeous, and so she, she did. And so I'm going to share those with you really quickly before we go to the video. So one second here. So this is, um, so this is the uh, hundredth sheep. I don't know if that's, there we go, hundredth sheep. And the colorway is the violet headed hummingbird. And it is a, um, BFL, 75 BFL, 25% nylon. And so when I saw this color, I thought I want a sweater out of this colorway. And so I thought, okay, she does six ounce braids, not four ounce, six ounce braids. And so I figured that four of these braids would be enough, but uh, if you could just feel feel these braids they're so soft and squishy so anyway um yeah so I've been practicing my spinning I have not decided whether I'm going to be spinning for a finger finger weight sweater or a DK weight sweater but until I figure that out um, I may start spinning on these um, maybe after Christmas um, but yeah so I have I have four of these and she also had a colorway that she had uh, dyed up, in, especially for the Salida Fiber Festival. 
Um, but after buying those four braids, I, I felt kind of guilty about buying more fiber because I had also bought a ton of yarn. So I thought, well, maybe if I go to Taos, then I would um, uh, pick up another braid or two <laughs> well, when if I went there. Um, but also, since she lives 15 minutes from my home, I could always stop by and say, hey, you've got some fiber I can buy. I haven't done that yet. But anyway, this one um, is called, what is this one called? This one is called Alpine Meadow. And after having spun that Targi um, earlier, I thought, well, I'll pick up some more Targi. So this is the Alpine Meadow colorway that she has. So anyway, this was beautiful pinks and, and, and greens. And I'm going to need to figure out... Um, what I'm going to make with this. So or whether or not I need to even get some more, I might have to get some more fiber or if I'm going to ply it with uh, some alpaca. But anyway, so that's what I have from uh, the hundredth sheet. And yeah, I think that's it for now. So let me check my notes. Yep. Okay, so so I'm going to uh, let you go now so that you can watch the uh, video from um, the Salida Fiber Festival. And when we come back, we will talk about uh, works in progress and um, the uh, giveaway. So I'll see you in a few minutes. Bye. <music> talking about uh, works in progress. So what I have here in my By the Bay uh, yarn company um, is my uh, my little sock sack and in it I have a sock. So this one, if you've uh, seen my previous videos, you know that I am a, a big fan of Zabra Ball. So I have um, this colorway that I thought was very uh, fall colored, very pumpkin-y and, and uh, 
fall leafy. So this is the, you know, my, my finished, my finished sock. Um, I have another one that is looking for my, um, I guess I don't have my other one. It must be somewhere else. But anyway, sorry. Just give me a second here. I'm going to get this. I think you can see it a little bit better if I put it on a, a sock uh, form here. So that because of the ribbing, it really uh, scrunches up and looks like a little bit of nothing. Anyway, so, okay, so here is my uh, Zara Ball sock. And once again, I used the uh, Regia to do the heels and toes, three by one rib. And this time I, I did not use the uh, Regia on the cuffs, um, but a two by two um, rib on the uh, cuff. So anyway, so that's sock one. And that is finished. And sock two, I have not even cast on yet. But uh, that will go on this week. This is not, I, I haven't decided if this is one of my uh, Christmas gifts. I just wanted to cast on that yarn because it was so pretty. So um, another sock that I have in my other By the Bay um, yarn company bag is my first two at a time toe up socks. And... I tell you what, this has been kind of a, a, well, it's been a learning experience. I'm always about learning experiences, but this one I was having a heck of a time with. You see how fiddly this two at a time is, but this is with um, the um, Apothecaries uh, double knitted sock blank. And I just really love the turquoise and gray. And then there's little speckles of uh, purple and um, rust in there too. But it just makes this gorgeous um, pattern on the sock. And uh, being two at a time, double knit, um, the socks are supposed to come out identical. And I think they're pretty close. I'm not really seeing exact patterning, but it is close. And once again, I'm using the, the gray regia on the heels and the toes. Haven't decided yet whether or not I'm going to use them on the cuffs. But so about the learning experience with the two at a time, um, I tried to do uh, the, I did the toe up with uh, Judy's Magic Cast on. And I got about maybe three or four rows in and said, no, I can't do this. I was doing the, uh, two circular needle um, method and so I split the socks between the two circular needles and just finished up the toe and then um, I ordered a 40 inch um, chow goo circular sock uh, needle and then I put both socks on and um, I'm trying to decide I, I think I had taken them off again and done each the heels separately as well and then put it back on again for the the uh, cuff it just um, I don't know if two at a time is for me I, um, I don't have a problem knitting the second sock after I knit the first one so um, I don't know um, maybe I'll, I'll try it again I mean practice makes perfect it's uh, learning something for the first time is always a little more difficult than you know after you've done a, a have a couple of them under your belt but anyway this is the um i said apothecary um sock yarn or sock um sock blank and my first two at a time socks so that is um i think i think i'm gonna have to keep these two i'm not so sure i want to give those away but i think there's enough yarn on there for me to make a second pair of socks because both my daughter and i wear a size eight, eight and a half. And depending on how long the cuff is, um, I could probably squeeze two socks out. And then my third sock, because I did mention that I always have at least three socks. Um, I said three pair, but what I meant was three socks, which would eventually be three pair because each sock would be 
a different sock yarn. So on my other By the Bay Yarn Company uh, sock bag, I started um, my first pair of um, Regia socks. I, I went ahead and bought um, this uh, Regia yarn and um, and I think I'm going to make these for my son. But the question that came up for me, and I've asked some people about it, and don't have an answer yet. I've checked Google, of course, because Google has all the answers, right? Um, but I've noticed that on yarns like this, mostly uh, European yarns, that it says that it's 100% um, or 80% virgin wool. Now I know that virgin wool is the first shearing of a sheep, but it doesn't tell me what breed the sheep is. And so if anybody knows, I mean, I'd appreciate uh, you letting me know. Maybe, I don't know if there's like a um, a generic wool breed uh, in Europe that is known for um, only being able to be sheared the first time and having good wool. And after that, it's it's not that great. Um, I don't know. But anyway, just, just a thought I'm just putting out there. Um, just a question. Let's see if anybody has an answer to that or if anybody's even thought about it. So, okay. So that are all my uh, sock whips. So now on to sweaters. Um, so the first sweater that I'm going to share is in my Luna Stitch um, bag. And this one is the um, Ravello sweater that I was uh, knitting for my daughter. This is, this is a Christmas present. She came by uh, about two weeks ago and I was able to have her try on the uh, sweater just to see um, if it, I was, it was fitting okay. So yeah, the length is, is fine and this, it looks like that uh, overall it's going to fit her okay. Um, so I'm starting on the sleeves, and this is a long sleeve sweater. sweater. Originally, she thought that she might want to have a turtleneck or a cowl neck um, um, neck, but she decided that the um, the the, the uh, one of the two patterns that comes for the neck finish on this sweater would be fine. Um, the only thing I wanted to point out about this one, and uh, this, I think this is a really good tip, is that when I mentioned about the um, the sewn bind off on the sock cuff being uh, very stretchy, um, I had done a traditional bind off on the sweater edge, and you can see it's it's not as stretchy. It doesn't have a lot of give. And one of the things that my daughter had mentioned when she tried on the sweater was that it felt real tight around the, the bottom edge. It was So I'm going to have to take out the um, um, bind off on this one and I'm going to do a sewn bind off instead. And I, I think that will fix that problem. So that is my Ravella sweater by Isabel Kramer. And... So the next sweater that I have, I just bought this bag. This is also from Luna Stitch. She does one of a kind bags, by the way. And so uh, I really, I really enjoy these uh, wide mouths. I'm able to get three skeins of yarn into uh, the bag plus the sweater. But I am almost finished, almost finished with my husband's uh, flax light sweater that I had shared with you last time. Now the last time I had, uh, I'd gotten to, I just uh, separated for the sleeves and I think I was about a couple inches down into the body and about, right about here. And I thought it was looking kind of small. And so I, I decided to have my husband try it on and sure enough, it, it was, it was, too small, even a couple of inches of growth from blocking, I was, was not going to fix the problem. So I uh, frogged the entire sweater and I uh, did the next size up. And But I also um, tightened up my gauge just a little bit because I had mentioned before that I was concerned about the floppiness of the neck 
And so I had planned on doing a folded over um, uh, neck edge the, where I had knit about an inch and a half and then did a, a purl row so that I could fold over and do the, uh, I knit another inch and a half and I was going to fold it over and then tack it down around the, to the sweater. But when I, um, I made one little change in the, uh, in, in how I hold my yarn. So typically I would just hold my yarn with my pinky and, sorry, I went wrong way. I'd grab the yarn with my pinky and then just uh, run it up the back of my hand and that was the way I, I knit. But um, normally I was knitting with worsted weight yarn and so there's a little more um, friction uh, of the yarn going through my finger. So knitting with a fingering weight yarn I couldn't, didn't squeeze my finger that tight, so I just made this one little change where I just looped it around a second time before taking it up the back of my hand, and just it added just enough tension to tighten up my stitches to where I was actually happy with the uh, fabric that I was getting on this sweater. So I did a just I did a normal neckline, then no 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 doubled over um, neckline, and you also notice that there's a little bit of pooling up around the chest area and I didn't see that until I was um, already through the body which you can see is you know pretty even as far as the the colors go but just this little skewed area here in the front and in the back and um, asked my husband about it and he said it's not a problem he likes it it's just fine so I have one uh, arm completed and I have the other arm about halfway done. Um, I ran out of yarn, so I need to um, uh, take up another uh, skein, Hank. Whoops. And I should be done um, by the end of this week, if not sooner. Um, the only other thing I want to mention about this sweater is that I, after having uh, gotten the feedback from my daughter about the bind off on her sweater, I did the sewn bind off on this one and look at the look at the stretch on that. So definitely a sewn bind off for um, a, the ribbing on a sweater is uh, I think perfect to have a, not have that. Uh, but I tried I tried uh, casting off loosely and it, I just didn't do it loose enough. And it's just easier to do the sewn bind off than it is to try to um, remember to pull a little extra yarn in my loops every time I, I do a, a regular bind off. And then the last thing that I have is my, um, well, I was working on Christmas presents and the cold weather hit and suddenly I realized that uh, um, I didn't have anything to wear other than a hat or a scarf. And I thought, I'm, I want to make myself a sweater. So I decided, um, I did a lot of dyeing too while I was uh, gone for my extended um, absence. And um, I dyed up this colorway. I call it Mantis, but I just this is one of my favorite colors of green. And so, I, if you might recognize this, this is the right way. This is the uh, Beekeeper cardigan. So um, I've been knitting very happily on this. It's a DK weight, and uh, and so I've just I've separated for the sleeves. And it's uh, going going very quickly, so I'm really happy with um, this pattern so far. So, oh, and I forgot to, to mention, I guess, um, I forgot to mention that this sweater, the Ravello sweater, I am knitting in Cloudborn, uh, the Peruvian Highland wool. And Peruvian Highland wool, I found out, is a, a cross between Merino and Corydale. So it makes a really nice lightweight um, and uh, rustic looking yarn. I was kind of surprised at how rustic looking it is, but uh, should hold up really well for a sweater. And then um, this one is a uh, superwash merino that um, I hand dyed uh, specifically in the um, chargers. Uh, LA Chargers colorway. My husband has been a Charger fan since he was nine years old. So um, I did a lot of uh, hit and miss trying to get this uh, color and uh, he's real happy with it. So I'm, I'm happy. 
So anyway, so that is all my sweaters. I think that's all my works in progress. So um, yeah, I guess all that leaves now is the um, giveaway. So I was thinking um, for if you're a YouTube subscriber or um, if you're watching this show and you want to participate, um, I said Thanksgiving is only a few days away here in the States. And so if you celebrate Thanksgiving where you are, um, I'd like to know what, how, how you cook your bird. Do you um, smoke it? Do you roast it? Do you fry it? Just curious on that. And then maybe uh, one of your favorite side dishes that, that uh, you just have to have. It's not Thanksgiving without it. Um, if you're not uh, uh, in a place that celebrates Thanksgiving, uh, what is your favorite uh, holiday, national holiday, or just event um, where you live? So if you just put a comment uh, below this uh, video, and like and subscribe, please, that would be nice, um, then I will uh, do a drawing. Um, I'm not going to promise that we'll be in the next couple of weeks, but we'll definitely be before Christmas. And so I will choose, uh, do a random number generator from those comments to win a, um, um, oh, I have it right here. Excuse me. This is, I'm going to put my glasses on. I've been squinting the whole podcast or vodcast, forgetting that I had uh, glasses here. But I have two skeins here of... Uh, Urban Silk, or it's called Showers of Flowers by Urban Silk. I don't know if you can see the label there. And it is a um, 93 yards of 80% silk and 20% cotton. So it's uh, 50 grams, two 50 gram skeins of uh, this Urban Silk. And uh, so yeah, so random number generator, uh, I will choose uh, a winner for these two hanks of, of uh, Urban Silk. And then um, also, I had been talking before about wanting to be able to um, see your projects and trying to learn uh, more about Ravelry and whether or not I was going to open up a group and and it just suddenly dawned on me, sometimes I can be a little slow, um, that I'm already on Instagram. And some of you actually follow me on Instagram. But the Instagram handles and your names don't always, um, are, aren't always the same. So if you already follow me on Instagram, then um, great. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. And I have been, uh, if, if I recognize, if, if I made the correlation between your name and uh, your uh, Instagram name, then I've been seeing, I, I, if, if you follow me, then I follow you back and I can see your projects as well. But if you don't, um, or if you don't already follow me on Instagram, um, I'm going to post uh, an announcement for um, this podcast being out and you, if you comment under that Instagram uh, post and tell me what your handle is then um, then I can find you and follow you and see your pictures and that way you can see what I'm working on and I can see what you're working on and uh, share in that way if you are not on um, Instagram or uh, um, yeah, if you're not on Instagram, if you're following me on YouTube, you wouldn't even know about this. But if you aren't on Instagram, I'm not going to make you uh, open up uh, an Instagram account. But, you know, I, I do have my contact info um, in the uh, description box. So please uh, send me an email and uh, attach your pictures. I've had a few people uh, send me um, pictures of uh, what they've worked on with either with my yarn that they've bought out of my shop or yarn that they um, won on a, on a YouTube uh, a giveaway. So anyway, so those are the two things. So to win the uh, Urban Silk, um, leave a comment on uh, how you cook your turkey. If you have uh, Celebrate Turkey Day and or uh, tell me what your favorite um, holiday is in uh, where you are. 
And then on Instagram, if you would just, um, if you, if I already follow you on Instagram, uh, tell me there what your favorite uh, way of cooking your turkey or what your favorite dish is. And if you um, don't already follow me on Instagram and I'm not following you, then give me your um, your Instagram name and so that I can find you and follow you then. And the winner of that drawing will uh, be able to choose um, a skein of yarn or a braid of fiber from my Etsy or my Fiber Crafty shop. I have two shops right now. Etsy, everybody knows about. Um, Fiber Crafty is a new um, um, venue for uh, fiber-related um, shops only. So if you're, uh, they they have people who sell fiber and yarn and uh, stitch markers and bags and anything that's just related to the uh, fiber community. So I am um, Duchess Fiber Arts on both Instagram, I'm sorry, Fiber Duchess Fiber Arts on both Etsy and Fiber Crafty. And I am the Yarn Duchess on Instagram. So anyway, um, I think I think that's all I have. I probably forgot a bunch of stuff. Um, I usually do. So let me double check my notes. Red pie, oops, red bow. Nope, that's it. So um, until next time, like I said, before Christmas, and um, have a wonderful Thanksgiving if you celebrate it. And um, if not, I will see you in a few weeks. So stay warm and take care.